Jesus begins his public ministry shortly after John the Baptist is imprisoned by Herod. He proclaims the nearness of God's reign and calls four fishermen to be his first disciples. A reading from Matthew chapter 4. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled, land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Fellow fishers of people, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. What was it like to sit in darkness and suddenly have the lights go on, do you think? Hey, Andrew, I've got another one, Peter yelled as another fish flopped into the bottom of the boat. All that time you spent down the river, you forget how to fish? Andrew kept pulling in his net. Peter, I can outfish you any day, any time, anywhere. I taught you how to fish, I taught you where to fish, and there's no way on God's green earth you're going to outfish me today or any day. It was the same brotherly banter every time they went out since they were kids. It used to end in an argument about who got the biggest fish and the wrestling match in the bottom of the boat. But little brother Peter got a little bit too big for Andrew to handle a couple of years ago, so no more wrestling. Besides, it's kind of silly for 18 or 20-year-old men to be wrestling every day. The other fishermen, they just roll their eyes and they get on with their work. It's good to have you back, brother, Peter said. It wasn't the same without you here the last couple years. That's because you can't catch a thing without me, you big loser, Andrew shouted. And then it was just the sound of nets rubbing against the boat <laughs> until Andrew said, Pete, I wish you could have been there with me. It was so awesome, the things that John said and did. I got up every day excited to see what was going to happen next. Peter stood up and threw a fish at his brother. You keep talking like that and Herod will throw you, Herod will throw you in prison, just like he threw that teacher of yours. You're probably right, but I don't care, Andrew said. If he ever gets out of prison, I'll join up with him again. I think he's a prophet, like Elijah. How often does a guy get a chance to learn from somebody like Elijah? I'd follow John anywhere. Did I tell you about the baptism in the Jordan River? Well, only about a thousand times, Peter said. No, I mean, I mean the baptism, Andrew said. John's preaching away like he always did, and then this guy walks up for baptism, and John, he falls on his knees in front of him. He says, no, I shouldn't baptize you. You should baptize me. You know John, he's not afraid of Herod or anybody, but this guy, this guy made him as nervous as a, as a little girl. John's hands shook when he baptized the guy. They shook. 
And then I saw this dove come down and land on the guy, and there was a voice, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Well, then what happened? Peter asked. Well, then, then he disappeared, Andrew said. I mean, he didn't actually disappear. He started walking towards the desert, and we never saw him again. So what? Peter asked. When we asked about him later, John said, He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then he said, He must increase. I must decrease. We had no idea what he was talking about. He, he always talked in riddles like that. And a few days later, the soldiers grabbed him, and I came home. So who do you think the guy was? Peter asked. I don't know, Andrew said. But there was sp something special about him, too. And if, and if I ever get to see him again, I'm going to ask him some questions. That guy's long gone, Peter said. It would be suicide to start preaching when Herod's in an arresting mood. Tell you what, if he shows his face again, I'll follow him with you. But I bet you a year's salary he's never heard from again. Catching anything? Somebody yelled out from the shore. Not much, Peter yelled. They'd actually caught quite a few, but fishermen never tell the truth. <laughs> it's him. Andrew whispered. What? Who? Peter said. The guy I told you about. The guy who got baptized. The Lamb of God guy. It's him, Andrew said. What do you want? Peter yelled. I want you, the man said, as if he knew him. Tell you what, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. Andrew started rowing, rowing the boat into shore. What are you doing, Peter said. It's him, Andrew said. I'm going with him. You can do what you want, but this guy, he's special. This is the chance of a lifetime. I'm going with him. Peter looked at his nets, and he remembered how empty they were without his brother. Okay, I'll go with you. And he pulled in his nets and helped row in. By the time they got in, the guy had already moved on the beach a ways. They pulled the boat up on the sand and ran after him. Farther down the beach, Zebedee and his sons were almost done for the day. They just had to mend the nets and then go home for dinner. This is the life, isn't it, boys? Zebedee said. Get up early and watch the sun rise over the lake. Even if we never caught a thing, it would be a privilege just to be here. And on top of all this beauty, God gives us fish to eat and fish to sell besides. It just doesn't get any better than this, does it, boys? James watched his brother during his dad's speech. And John mouthed the whole speech word for word. <laughs> it wasn't difficult. They heard the same speech every day since they were old enough to go out in the boat. Zebedee got out of the boat to go talk to the other fishermen. If I hear that speech one more time, I swear I'm going to drown the old man, James said. I'm so tired of that speech. Relax, John said. You know, Dad, he's just grateful. But don't you ever get restless, James asked. All we ever do every day is row the boat out to the good spots, throw out the nets, pull in the nets, row in, take the fish to market, argue with the buyers, get terrible prices, take the money and come back and mend the nets. And then we go talk to all the other guys about fishing, day after day after day. Don't you think there's more to life than this? I don't know, John said. I know I'll never be as good at it as Dad is. It's like a calling for him. He loves to outsmart the other fishermen, doesn't he? You can see it. He loves to think like the fish through the seasons. I think, I think he even loves the smell. <laughs> For me, it's just a living. I can't do this the rest of my life. Can you, James said? There's got to be something better for us. Something God made us to do. Us and nobody else. I'm not sure what it is, but I know it ain't fishing. 
Look at us, John said. I mean, we're 21 years old. We got no education. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Fishing's all we know. Zebedee came back to the boat for another net. You boys done mending yet? We ain't got all afternoon. I'm getting hungry. And just then, three men came down to the boat. It was Peter and Andrew and some guy they'd never seen before, dressed like a rabbi. The stranger said, James, John, I heard you talking just there. You follow me, and I'll make you fishers of people. The brothers looked at each other. How do you know what we were talking about? John mouthed like he did with his dad's speech. I don't know. James mouthed back. James put his net down and he looked at his dad. Then he said, I'll see you later, Dad. I'm going to go with these guys for a while. And he followed the rabbi and Peter and Andrew down the beach. John folded his net, kissed his dad on the head, and did the same. That afternoon, the five men stopped in town. The, the rabbi started preaching. He sounded just like John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, he said. And crowds started to gather round. And then the rabbi healed all the sick people in the crowd. Healed them with just a touch or a word. By supper time, Andrew and Peter and James and John were hooked. This guy is special. Even John the Baptist can't preach like he preaches. And nobody does miracles like that. That evening, both sets of brothers ran back to their folks, told them they were going to follow Jesus. Old Zebedee resisted. What are you boys sowing? What are you sowing your wild oats? How are you going to support yourselves? We've got to follow him, Dad, James said. I think he's a prophet. I think God is going to do something big in Israel. I don't see anything good coming out of this, Zebedee said. Nothing but disappointment for you and lost sons for me. Don't you know it's time to keep your head down, to lay low? It ain't no time to be making lots of noise, not with that nutcase Herod calling the shots. All this preaching and gathering crowds, somebody's going to get themselves killed before this is over. Why you want to leave this place? We got a nice home, we got a nice living here. And what am I going to tell your sisters and your mama? I just have to, Dad. I've never met anyone like him before, John said. Tell Mom I love her. And the brothers kissed their dad on, his head, on the head and ran off to Jesus' house in Capernaum. And for the first time since he could remember, James had no idea what tomorrow would bring. Amen. Please stand for the hymn.